Bonjour tout le monde, welcome back to We in France, I'm Diane, and holy heck are cultural differences fascinating. I've been living here in France since 2012, and there is absolutely no shortage of material when it comes to examining the differences between life in France versus the US, and um, just in general, how the two, the two nationalities live life. And I absolutely love talking about this stuff, one, in the hope that it'll prepare you for your trip to France, or at the very least, to give you insight into how the French do things. So to that end, today, we're gonna get into some calculations or at least differences that relate to numbers and measurements that are done differently between the two countries. Now, some of them you probably expect, but a bunch of them were new to me and they were only things that I learned about after moving to France. Now, of course, some of these definitely apply to other countries, uh, not just France, but since I live in France, that's always my reference point and the point of comparison for me. So for, for purposes of this video, I'm gonna be talking about France versus the US. All right, number one, fuel efficiency. Now, this one took me a minute to kind of wrap my head around. I wrongly assumed that gas mileage in France would be calculated the same way it's done in the US, just of course with, with liters and kilometers instead of gallons and miles, but that's not the case. Now, if you're unaware, um, in the United States, fuel efficiency for our vehicles, it's measured as a distance. So it's miles per vehicle per unit of fuel volume. So the number of miles you can drive per gallon of gas. And the higher this number, the more efficient the vehicle is. So you might see a number for city driving and a number for highway driving. Um, an older pickup truck or like a giant SUV, it might get 15 miles a gallon if you're lucky. And maybe a smaller car or you know modern trucks and SUVs, they might get over 30 miles a gallon. Now in France, fuel efficiency is a measurement of volume, not distance. It's the volume of fuel consumed per unit distance per vehicle. So it's actually liters consumed per 100 kilometers. That fuel efficiency, it's expressed as how many liters of gas can a vehicle use to go 100 kilometers. So the lower the number, the better it is for your wallet. Number two, school grade levels. Now in the US, school grades go from one to 12. In that order, it's pretty simple. One is young kids, 12 is a high schooler at the end of their high school career, and it's sequential. Now in France, you know these grade school names as they relate to elementary, middle, and high school, they're a bit different and they don't, of course they don't, of course they don't go in that numerical simple sequential order one through 12. And truth be told, if you ask me right now to tell you the French equivalent of fifth grade just off the top of my head, I'd have to pause a second and do a quick calculation because I don't know the grade names by heart. I literally looked them up for this video so I get it right and I'm completely serious about that. And I just chalk that up to not having kids and not really focusing on school related things and committing them uh, to memory. So here are the names for each French grade level, starting with kindergarten, that is the Grande Section de GS. Then we go up to first grade, that is the Cours Préparatoire CP. Then we have the Cours Élémentaire 1, CE1. Second grade is going to be the same thing, Cours Élémentaire 2, uh, that's CE2. Third grade, we go up to Cours Moyen 1, CM1. Fourth grade is CM2. And then it gets a little easier. We had the CZM, and that's exactly the same as sixth grade. That's a good reference point right in the middle, CZM, sixth grade. Uh, cinquième, that's seventh grade. Quatrième is the eighth grade. Troisième is the ninth grade. Seconde is the tenth grade. Première is the eleventh grade. And then finally, at the end of high school, we have Terminal, twelfth grade. So commit those to memory, and if you don't, don't worry about it. You'll, you'll get by in France just fine <laughs> without knowing all of them by heart. All right, number three, blood pressure and cholesterol. Now, blood pressure is measured in units of millimeters of mercury, MMHG, uh, stateside, and it consists of two numbers. We have the uh, systolic um, followed by the diastolic under it, so like 120 over 80. Uh, that would be normal in the U.S. So in France, it's the same measurement as the U.S., but the unit is expressed as centimeters of mercury instead of millimeters of mercury. So as you know, there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. So just add that zero to the end of each French blood pressure reading to have the U.S. equivalent. So for example, um, a French doctor might tell you your blood pressure is 12 over 8, and that's centimeters of mercury, right? So add a zero to that and you'll get 120 over 80 to have that US millimeters of mercury. So same deal, add the zero. And regarding cholesterol in the US, I believe it's measured in milligrams of cholesterol uh, per deciliter. And in France, and like I said, other countries, cholesterol levels are actually measured in what I believe you pronounce as millimoles um, per liter. So it's just a slightly different unit. All right, number four, 
credit score, and this one doesn't even exist in France. So if you're not familiar uh, with credit scores in the U.S., basically everyone has one. Um, it's a numeric value, and the highest you can have, I believe, is 850. And it's used to assess a person's credit worthiness. And more or less, just keep in mind, anything above 750 is, is pretty good. Now, a higher credit score, it means you're less of a risk to lenders. So you're going to have an easier time getting um, things like a better interest rate on a loan, credit line. And then on the other hand, things like defaulting on a loan, paying your bills late, applying for too many loans in a short period of time, and like a whole bunch of other factors, they all influence one's credit score negatively. So in France, if you're wondering, well, if there's no credit score, how the heck do you get a loan? Well, there's no credit score involved, really. And all you do, it's kind of simplistic. You sit down with your bank. They review your, your bank account, your earnings via your pay stub, any other loans or debts you might have. And then, boom, they do a calculation to make sure that you have the means to repay that loan. Smart, right? And then they just they make a decision whether or not they want to loan to you. Yeah. As I mentioned before, the French really don't use credit cards either. Debit cards, yes. And I'll link you to a post or a video that has more on that. All right, number five, baking measurements. Now, in the U.S., if you've ever baked anything, you know that recipes list out ingredients in cups. But depending on how you fill your measuring cup, your half cup of flour might not match mine, depending on how much you pack it in there and, and all of that. Now, in France, ingredients for baking are measured out in grams. It's by weight. So 100 grams of flour, when weighed on the scale, is always going to be 100 grams of flour. It doesn't matter how much you pack in. Weight is weight. And since precision in baking is crazy important, I feel like weighing your ingredients like the French do, and like I said, a lot of other countries, it does make a lot of sense. And I've come to love recipes, really, that, that measure ingredients in grams. There's so much less room for error. And um, that's just how I bake now, even when I'm in the U.S. Um, I, I just love using a scale. And speaking of baking, I always hear from you guys that your bread quality at home doesn't compare to the bread you get in France. It's actually pretty bad. To that end, I want to introduce you to Wild Grain. They are a premium bake from frozen bread, pasta, pastry, um, subscription box delivery service in the U.S. that I think you're going to need in your life. You get an assorted box of, of frozen deliciousness, things like sourdough bread, artisanal pastries, um, hand-cut pasta, cookies, that sort of thing. And they go from your freezer to the table in 25 minutes or less. You don't need to thaw anything. It's easy peasy. There's no commitment. And the quality is incredible. And I have to say that with my link below, it takes 10 bucks off your first box. You're going to get free croissants with every order for life. And um, I just want to point them out to you. So let's move on. All right, number six, we have bed sizes. Now, before moving to France, I never really considered that different countries would have different bed size equivalents. I figured that would kind of be a standard size, you know, just something that's the same everywhere. And I didn't give it much thought. But no, but that is not the case. A twin bed in France does not have the same dimensions as a twin bed in the U.S. So for reference, uh, let's take a look at a queen size bed in the U.S. I believe it's 60 by 80 inches. And in France, that queen is going to measure 63 by 79 inches. It's just 160 by 200 centimeters. Pillow shapes are not the same either. Um, I told you in another video, I'll link here. I never bought square pillowcases until I moved to France and, and a whole bunch of other things I never owned before moving to France. So check that out. Next up, we have ring sizes, number seven. And French ring sizes are perfectly straightforward. They're measured in millimeters, uh, the, the circumference of your finger, right? And that's your ring size. So sizes in the 40s um, on the smaller side up to the 60s, they're pretty common. You just measure your finger and that's your ring size. So like a 52, for example. And I just feel like ring sizes are tricky in general because even in the U.S., a six at one jeweler might not be exactly the same size in another place um, or in a different style. I feel like they're pretty close, but ring sizes can be a real pain in the butt if you're not able to try it on before you buy it. Like a six isn't always a six isn't always a six, you know? And I feel like when a ring is like the tiniest bit too tight or too loose, it drives me insane. But if you kind of add this whole French ring size thing into the mix, it takes complication to a whole nother level because I feel like if you're shopping online and you're trying to convert your American ring size to the French equivalent, it could be a hit or miss. And I'm speaking from experience. You know, some size charts will say, oh, a French six is 55.5. Um, and others say it's a 52, so it's kind of, it can be tricky. I just recommend if you can, try your ring on in person or buy from a place that has free returns and exchanges. And on that note, French clothes and shoe sizes are different as well. I'm like a 9 US and I'm a 39 or 40 
in France. So it's just a totally different measurement. I think I'm going to leave it there for today. I'd love to hear from you guys down below. What other things would you add to my list here of things that are that are calculated differently in France. And um, as I always tell you about, for more information to prepare you for your trip to France, I'd love for you to check out my ebook if you haven't already. It's titled 75 Beginner France Tips for a Standout Trip. And um, yeah, thank you for being here. And I'll see you back here on We in France soon. Salut.